Eastern on ESPN2 in the app. One app, one app. NBA season right around the corner. Stephen A., let's continue with your top 10 NBA storylines. What is number eight, sir? Well, number eight, number eight is a team that I've been talking about because they've got one of the greatest players in the world at point, in point guard, Luka Doncic. Now, obviously, the Dallas Mavericks are a team that cannot be ignored, uh, obviously, because you have a Luka Doncic. You have a Chris Stapps Porzingis. When healthy and ready to play, obviously could form a dynamic duo. Nevertheless, since they won the championship in 2011, it's been a decade, and they have not been out of the first round. So, who knows what's going to happen with the Dallas Mavericks this season? Who better to talk about it, though, than with their new head coach, the one and only Jason Kidd, new head coach for the Dallas Mavericks <laughs> right here with yours truly. What's going on, Big Tom? How are you, man? Wonderful. Good morning. Good morning, Stephen uh, A. Appreciate you being on the show. You took this job with the Dallas Mavericks. Why? What was it that excited you about this job? Well, I think you brought up a, a name early, and that's Luca. Um, you talk about one of the best players in this league, only 22 years old. Um, I felt that I could help him. I, I know that he's going to be considered an MVP candidate. Um, I've been around a couple of MVP candidates. And so um, my job for Luca is just to make it easy. But, you know, the biggest draw is that we have a young team, an uh, exciting team, a team that set records offensively. And I felt that if I can give some defensive principles, uh, we could be one of those teams that can raise that gold trophy at the end of the season. Why not this year? When Mark Cuban interviewed you for this job, obviously Dirk Nowitzki and others had a lot to do with you getting the job because Dirk Nowitzki obviously has significant say within that organization at this particular moment in time as well as he should, considering his greatness and what he's done for the Dallas Mavericks all of those years. Nevertheless... When you took the job, what did Mark Cuban tell you he needed from you and he needed from this team specifically? Well, Mark, uh, his first thing was be yourself. You know, I, we all understand that you have a high basketball IQ. You understand what it takes to win and you understand what it takes, what, what it means to work. And um, and so he's been great. Um, I played for Mark, uh, won a championship. And so I understand that he's competitive. He wants to win. And so, but he also understands that we all have to work and do our part. And so that was the first conversation that we have, have had in, in understanding that it's really simple. Be in the gym, make guys better, and have fun doing it. Bottom line is you're the new head coach. You got a new president of basketball operations and Nico Harrison, uh, who I know very, very well and expect to do a, a tremendous job. Now that Rick, you've replaced Rick Carlisle, he's obviously replaced Don Nelson. When you took this job, You've obviously heard a lot of noise about Luka Doncic and the relationship that he has with Chris Stapps Porzingis. What can you tell us about what you heard? And, where could you, and what could you tell us about where you believe that relationship is now and is heading? Well, I think uh, we all heard in the NBA circle that there was, you know, tension between the two. Um, but I would have to say that's fake news. Uh, I think they both want to compete. I think they really want to compete. Um, there were some other issues uh, that I thought they did a great job of keeping um, in-house. Um, it had nothing to do with those two. And so um, I'm excited. Uh, I think the relationship between the two of them is, are, is at a high level. Um, they're basketball players who want to compete and who, you know, they want to win. And for a coach, I have to put them in that position to be successful. But I think their relationship is great. Other issues like what? Because when we look at these two guys, we, we know that Doncic is a star. We know that he's a stud. And we had a lot of expectations for Porzingis, primarily due to the health, obviously, that interfered with a lot of it. But but what else about Chris Stapps Porzingis is missing or was missing that is going to be alleviated now? Well, I think just being a basketball player, um, I think uh, in the past system, he was, you know, limited to doing a couple of things. I want KP to be a basketball player. <clears throat> when you saw him in New York, he, he was a basketball player. He wasn't limited to just shooting threes. Um, I really believe that we can play through him in the post, play through him in the mid-range, and, and play basketball. That Those points count. Um, and I think he has a skill set at 7-3 to be able to, to deliver that. And so I'm excited. Excited to be able to see him be himself and not be limited to just shooting threes. 
Now, Coach, you've had a lot of experiences yourself. You were in Brooklyn. You were in Milwaukee. Things didn't work out there. Uh, but I was very happy that you got this job. I felt you deserved it. I felt you paid your dues. And obviously, uh, you're one of the great basketball minds that exist in this game. Where do you Thank feel you. you are and and where your growth spurt has taken place uh, in, in order for you to warrant this position as being the new head coach of the Dallas Mavericks? What's different about you now compared to what you were when you were in Brooklyn and Milwaukee as a head coach? Well, I think the biggest difference is, you know, I went from straight from playing to becoming a head coach and responsible for uh, 15 players. Uh, I think two or three of those players are, are going to be Hall of Famers in Brooklyn. And so um, just understanding what it meant, um, the responsibility of 15 guys as a player, as a point guard, you're responsible for four guys on the floor and yourself. And there's a big difference between that. And so uh, going through that, I was very fortunate to have those older players in Brooklyn. And then when, when I got to uh, Milwaukee, um, they were on the heels of just winning 14 games. Um, I thought I brought what it meant and how hard it, you know, it is to win in this league and shared that they had to work hard. And we built a great foundation in Milwaukee. I, people always say that it didn't work out well. I, I think it worked out great um, mm. be, I, because I, I, I taught – those young guys, what it meant to be a pro, um, what it meant to work. And uh, Giannis turned out to be an MVP. Chris turned out to be an all-star. And so I don't I, I don't look at I look at it differently in a positive way. And now I can share that experience here in Dallas. Now, the expectation, coach, for people, you know, looking at the basketball, particularly in the Western Conference, Lakers are the team to beat because they got a whole bunch of experienced dude led by the great LeBron James. Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, don't hurt. You got Melo there. You're looking at the Clippers, and Kawhi Leonard is expected back early. You hear about Denver once Jamal Murray gets back. You hear about Utah because of Donovan Mitchell. You hear about the Phoenix Suns because they're the reigning Western Conference champions. You don't hear much about the Dallas Mavericks other than Luka Doncic. That's about it. What's your expectation for the Dallas Mavericks this season? Well, I think we're in a great seat. Um, I think when you look back uh, at last year, no one really talked about Phoenix. Uh, and then they get Chris Paul, and Chris Paul takes them and wins the Western Conference you know, championship. And understanding that, um, we feel that we have a talented team. We have a team that's back. Um, offensively, we know we can put the ball in the basket. Defense is where we, we've concentrated so far in training camp. Um, and so it's all right to fly under the radar. Um, understanding uh, there are some very talented teams, and the Lakers are going to be the favorite because of uh, LeBron and the guys that they have in AD. Uh, and they got a great coach in Frank Vogel. So, um, But we feel that we can compete. And uh, you can't play it on paper. you got to play it on the court. And uh, we look forward to that challenge. Your definition, last question, your definition of success for this team this year is what? Uh, health. That's it. Because, uh, yeah, because once if you're healthy, um, you know, a lot of good things will happen. Um, everybody yeah. wants to put a number on it. Um, we always talk about the standard in the Western Conference is 50 games uh, to punch that ticket to, to the playoffs. Um, we all understand. We all have a bad taste in our mouth of what happened last year with the Clippers being up 2-0. So, yeah, we have many goals within uh, in-house, but I think our health, uh, if we're healthy, uh, we could surprise or we can be who we think can be, and that's competitive and hopefully win uh, a championship. Coach Kidd, my definition of success for the Dallas Mavericks this upcoming season is getting out of the first round. That's it for I'll me. Take I don't that. care how many games you win. It's getting it. You'll take that? You'll take that? I'll take that. I'll take right, that man. because that means we're playing the second round. All right, my man. The one and only Jason Kidd, new head coach for the Dallas Mavericks. Appreciate you, Coach. Thanks so much. Thank you, Stephen A. All right. Molly, back to you. All right. Uh, we'll stay in Dallas. I like that answer, though. Health is wealth. Uh, NFC East rivalries are always a beat up. The New York Giants riding high after a